Hey guys, so today I wanted to show you some enhancements that I've done to my Nissan Leaf DIY battery pack. Now keep in mind, this battery pack has six modules. That's around 3,000 watts if it was brand new. Uh, I usually don't fill it to maximum capacity, which is you know 4.2 volts a cell. I usually go to 4.1 and I don't drain it all the way down. So on average, I get about 16 to 1,700 watts out of this. And that should ensure a, a long uh, battery life uh, of these Nissan cells that are already used cells. So one enhancement that I did to this system that I really like was I always had struggle charging it, uh, how I was gonna charge it. You saw in a couple prior videos, I used a small battery charger, then I used a, a larger battery charger. <clears throat> and so I went out and I bought this uh, Meanwell power supply. So if you can see there, it's an SP75024. So what that means is it's uh, 24 volts, 750 watts. So uh, what that means is that on a, on a empty battery pack here, I should be able to charge this somewhere in a little bit over two hours. And I have done that and it, and it works kind of well. Uh, and that's not too fast of a charge rate for these Nissan Leaf cells, still within a safe limit. But I wanted to show you today, um, you know, real quickly how this works. So what I did was I really put the power supply on these Velcro strips so I could easily remove this whole pack uh, when I'm not charging it. So if I'm taking this camping or whatever, I can just uh, charge it up before I leave, take this off then it's a little bit portable of a solution. Or I could leave this on and, you know, if I had a generator, I could just uh, plug this into a generator. So what this is on this particular model, it's 120 volts and out comes 24 volts. Now the really cool thing about this particular model is it's got a, a um, constant voltage and it, all, it also does current limiting. So uh, it's a really cool way that it charges is it will basically put all the available current that it can, which is a, gee, I can't remember, I want to say 30 amps, I'm, I'm, I just can't remember off the top of my head, but basically it's 750 watts. Uh, and as it gets closer to the set voltage, uh, which this model is 24 volts, it starts tapering that down, uh, and then it tapers it down to nothing when it gets to 24 volts. But here's the cool part about this, is that little, <clears throat> uh, adjustment knob in there, I can set this voltage. So, and it's highly configurable. I think this one, I wanna say I saw it go down to 18, uh, and then it can even probably go upwards to around 27, 28. I, obviously I don't need that high with lithium ion, but what I was trying to say is there's some flexibility in there with uh, the range uh, that you can set these at. So I have this set for uh, right around 24.6, and I think that equates out to 4.1 volts uh, per cell, which is perfect for, for what I'm using this for. And what I also did is on the positive terminal, I went ahead and just uh, installed a fuse. It's the event if I had any problems, uh, the fuse would blow and I wouldn't either, you know, I wouldn't have any, any, any hazard issues. So I went ahead and wired up a fuse. And what I did on my Xantrex inverter is I just installed another, uh, nut on the end so I can easily attach these and unattach them. I'm sure there was probably a better method uh, than, than I used there. And uh, you know just what you see here is just this is just a um, voltage slash wattage slash ampere device and I was as I was testing my uh, cells I was using it so you can see right now we're sitting at zero volts and what we'll do is we'll show how many watts this puts in here in a minute once we get this going. So um, the first step, and I'm going to be doing this with one hand, so it, it may be a little tricky for me as I hold the camera here. So what we're going to do is just put on the positive terminal. And as I push down, you know, this gets tighter and tighter, so that, that's actually on there pretty tight. Don't worry about it arcing or anything. Now, um, with all inverters, when you hook them up, you when you first hook them up, or at least any inverter I've seen, you kind of get that first spark, which is kind of scary when you when you touch it. So we're going to just uh, 
you see that spark right there on the negative. And then uh, again, this is one hand and a little bit tricky, but I think we can get through it. So I'm just gonna try to get this on a little tighter. Okay, so as I work it up, it gets it gets on. So it's it's tight. And uh, one thing to note with this model, you just have to have a jumper because this allows for remotes uh, on and off. And so since we don't have a remote switch, we just have the jumper set and that little green light will come on when, when it hooks up to the battery. So I guess what we should do too is show you where we sit on the voltage. Um, okay, so 2297 is what the fluke says. And what we're also going to do is just briefly hook up that watt meter I showed you, and we're going to see what it says. It should be relatively close. Let's just take a peek. Uh, 2298. So they were very, very close. And this particular meter, I read some reviews where you have to calibrate these, and, and you can definitely calibrate them. The instructions are online out there. And maybe what I will do in a future video is, is kind of show you what all these settings are. There's not too many good videos out there that kind of explain all these settings and how they all work. And um, the device itself is just a little flaky itself, um, in my opinion. Or it just could be the lack of a good manual uh, to explain all these options. But So we're sitting at 2297. Obviously, we don't have any amps uh, because I didn't turn it on yet. But uh, so really that's all you have to do you know you just take your positive your negative you hook them up to um, your battery now again my battery comes up through here you know down through here through a fuse and um, what we're gonna do now is turn it on and we're gonna take a look at it so on the kilowatt you can see we're pulling in 915 watts through through the kilowatt and then we'll get down to it over here and you can see uh, 34 amps over here. So, and you, did you see down below it says 806 watts. So that's, uh, the power supply is rated at 750, slightly uh, over that. And the one thing I forgot to show you was uh, before I connected it up, the voltage. Uh, when it wasn't connected to the load. But the voltage is set on here for 24.6. So when this, when this eventually catches up and gets to 24.6, all that slows down. The, the amperage will go down and the voltage goes up to 24.6. So you can see right now we're putting 34 amps into the battery at 23.76, which equals around 815 watts. So again, it's an incredibly efficient way for me to charge these batteries in a relatively quick and safe amount of time. Now, um, you may ask, well, we got 800 watts going in here. These are 10 gauge wires. They don't even really get warm. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm touching them right now and I, I don't even feel any warmth in them. Now, again, I just turned it on, but I, I've ran this test before. This one here, because I bought this uh, fused wire, it, it is 10 gauge, or they say it's 10 gauge, and it does get slightly, slightly warm, uh, but this wire here, which came from, I think, a 10 gauge uh, SOOW wire, I've never even felt it get warm. So it's quite possible that the strands in here are, are slightly less than the ones in here, but again, nothing to be concerned because it's barely barely uh, a difference in temperature from ambient temperature so uh, again I just wanted to show you the way I now charge these Nissan Leaf batteries it's incredibly efficient and fast I just set that you know if I wanted to go to 4.2 I can crank that up to 25.2 uh, I can set it anywhere in between uh, from you know, 24 if I want to be on the safe side 24 it literally goes up in I think one uh, one hundredths increments on here when, when you just put your Phillips screwdriver in there and turn it. But uh, I also wanted to show you another quick little thing that I added, and I'm going to be adding a cigarette lighter as well. So I went out and bought one of these on Amazon. I'll see if I can remember where I got it, and I'll put the link uh, down below. 
But what is nice about this and why I bought this is this is a uh, 12 or 24 volt DC uh, to USB. And what's nice about it is compared to some of the other ones is I don't need the inverter to be on, right, to, to use this. The other way around is, uh, you know, I can put the inverter on and then I could plug uh, a wall wart into the 120 side and charge my phone up. But that's kind of efficient because the inverter's running. So the inverter does not need to be on. And the nice thing about this one as opposed to other ones is it, it doesn't use any um, uh, energy while it's off because it has an off-on switch right here. So if you see that little button right there, I can turn that on and then you can just see how it lit up. So these are both two volt, I'm sorry, these are both, there's two outlets, five volts each, 2.1 amps each, which is perfect for charging up my phone. And then when I'm done, I can just shut it off uh, or I can leave it on. The, the milliamp hour draw, I, I measured it, I don't remember what it was, but it's really low. So if I accidentally did leave it on, uh, it wouldn't drain the battery too much at all. So one other future enhancement, I'm gonna put a cigarette lighter here. I just recently went out and bought a 12 slash 24 volt refrigerator. And the good news there is I don't have to convert this down to 12 volts. I, I'm gonna put a cigarette lighter here and it will be a 24 volt outlet DC. And the, and the reason I'm doing that is that I don't wanna step it down my refrigerator is 24 volts, and a lot of actually DC devices, a lot of them now do run on 12 or 24 volts. So uh, the nice thing about the cigarette lighter as well as this here for the phones is again, this inverter does not need to be on. So this only needs to be on if I'm running a 120 volt appliance. And again, with this inverter, it's so massive. It, you know, it's, it'll support 1800 watts, I think 3000 surge watts, so it, it's, quite capable of running an air conditioner, you know, 5,000 BTU air conditioner. I believe I even tested it with an 8,000 BTU air conditioner. It's a very stout inverter, and I, I would urge you, if you're in the market for an inverter, to try to find one of these. Again, this is a 1,800-watt, 24-volt inverter, and uh, I, I can't say enough about it. It has the low shutdown, so the batteries, if they did below, I'm sorry, go below, I believe it's at 21 volts, you, which is three point, somewhere around 3.6 volts a cell, it starts beeping to say, you know, hey, you, you gotta shut this off because your, your batteries are starting to get a low. I think it does a total cutout at 20 volts, which is like 3.3 volts a cell, which is perfect for, for, for me and keeping these batteries safe. But again, this is a nice, small, portable solution. You know, I, I also did uh, go out and buy a Yeti 400 uh, lithium and, you know, Yeti does make some higher end models, I think a 1400 and a 3000. And I wanna say their 1400 probably is somewhere around the size of this. Uh, so again, this pulls about 1600 watts. If these batteries were new and taken care of, it would pull in every bit of 2800 to 3000 watts, almost in the same size as, as one of those Yeti 1400s. But again, it doesn't look nearly as nice as a Yeti. Uh, but it, it, that's kind of, I think, the appeal to it. It's a nice DIY, and you know, this is removable, just held on with Velcro, and uh, a super fast way to charge these up in a safe way. Uh, so, again, uh, you know, just kind of show you the batteries are starting to get up to 24. We're at 34.6 amps, we're pulling 800, and, you know, low eights uh, of the wattage. So, it's actually pulling a little more than the power supply is rated at. And it actually does have an overcurrent feature. So if for some reason I had a short circuit or some situation that the uh, current, it tried to draw a massive amount of current, it, it actually has a feature to shut itself off. Or I, I don't remember if this model hiccups, meaning it'll, it'll uh, uh, try to start itself after the, the uh, fault has cleared. So uh, I've tested this out probably now about five times I've charged this, give or take. These, this is a Meanwell charger. You know, it's got some good and bad reviews uh, from my scene out there with, with Meanwells. I think it's a made in China charger, but it actually seems pretty robust. And uh, again, this is I think the sixth time through and I haven't had any issues with it. So I'll have to see if it does uh, have longevity uh, or not. Uh, and I, you know, I liked it so much that on my second pack over here uh, that I did the same exact uh, solution, same exact charger. And 
I did not put the fuse on this one yet. I bought the fuse. Uh, I just ran out of these, these uh, I don't even know what they're called, Ring the rings on the end I ran out, so I have to go get more, and I'll, I'll just swap this out with, with uh, the one that I have. And uh, again, I like the Meanwhile so much, I, you know, sitting on that air conditioner right there, I actually bought a 48 volt one as well. Now that's a 450 watt power supply because I have some ideas here that I want to play around with. And one is possibly uh, paralleling these two batteries so that I can double the amount of my uh, amperage with these two batteries. So I can go positive to positive, negative to negative, or I could just go positive to negative uh, on these and get 48 volts out of the pack. Now, why would I want to go to 48 volts? Uh, I don't know. I have a couple 48 volt chargers. Uh, I'm sorry, I have a couple 48 volt inverters that I could uh, hook those up to if I wanted. But uh, again, I'm just, just in the process of thinking about how I can get these two packs to really double my capacity uh, of what I have. That pack there, believe it or not, and I was going to do a comparison. I bought one of these packs from, I think it was called Green Hybrid Batteries and the other one's from Tech Direct Club. And I was going to do a showdown with both of them. Uh, but to be very honest with you, they both deliver around the same uh, uh, wattage and amps, to be very frank. I think these batteries start out brand new with 66 amp hours from the factory. And after they get a few years on them from the, the car owners, they really drop their capacity down to between 70 and 80 uh, percent, which is totally fine with me. I have no problems with a used pack as long as I'm gonna get consistently around 1600 watts out of the pack. Uh, and if, again, if I wanted to, to get 3000 watts out of it, I could just parallel these two packs together and I would have a 3000 watt uh, pack. Uh, 